this is what I've managed to collect <laughs> so far. Uh, we have probably about 3,000 pictures and many, many documents. Uh, anyway, there's a, a lot of sources of the history, obviously the annual reports, the Del Mar Press and its precursor, the news, a newsletter. Um, Gene Feld did a 25 year history in 1981 and then there were, were sort of revisions to that in the handbooks. Uh, the picture directories, uh, session and committee reports, and then obviously conversations with long-term members. Mm. Um, the initial date of organization is, was a, establishment of an initial steering committee under Frank uh, Ackerman, who was a temporary clerk in April, 1956. And the date of the establishment of the church is usually given as November 18th, 1956, uh, where there was an organizational meeting held at the Masonic Hall mm -hmm. under uh, Reverend Jack Cooper, a moderator from the Presbytery of Albany. Uh, a committee to name the el uh, name elders of, of nine elders and five deacons was established. And in July 1957, uh, the property where the church is you know, currently now between uh, Delaware and Custer uh, was uh, given to the uh, church from the presbytery for a uh, price of $1. This document is in the library generally. It's framed to picture and it has the uh, 86 charter members as of uh, November 18th, 1956. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, none of these, the original members are still surviving, although some who may have moved away may be still may surviving. Uh, I think the last local uh, um, member to uh, die was uh, uh, Nancy Wynn. Uh, if we look at the, the ministers that have uh, served the Delmar Presbyterian Church, we'll have to list uh, Jack Cooper and Harold Ogden in the organizational thing. But George Phelps is generally uh, regarded as the first minister that was called by the congregation, followed by uh, Larry Dice, um, the interim uh, Bob Fultz Morrison, and our current pastor, Karen, Karen Pollan. A picture of George and his wife, Virginia, uh, from earlier in their ministry. Uh, and the church originally uh, was held because there was no building at the uh, Masonic Temple on Kenwood Avenue, uh, which is that shown on the left, and Sunday School letting out on, on the right side here. Uh, there's also, this is, we have one picture taken of a service uh, during, uh, in the Masonic Temple. And this was for several years until the, uh, uh, the current uh, sanctuary was built. Uh, in the early years after uh, George Phelps was called as minister, uh, the church bought the manse at 32 Alban Road, where I think Larry Dice lives still now. Mm. now early in history, uh, there was a woman's association which had about 20 members at each, at each meeting. Uh, there was an organizational meeting of the couples club which subsequently was suspended and then uh, reorganized uh, about 10 years later. In 1958, uh, plans uh, to, to proceed with the first 4,000 square foot building of Delaware Avenue Church. And these were delayed during which several members left. The initial plans were quite different from what we see at the present, as a present sanctuary. Uh, July 59, the Presbytery recommended dissolution of the pastoral relationship, which didn't, probably did not happen. In November of 59, they were reorganized under the uh, jurisdiction of the Albany Presbytery. And in June 60, finally, the plans for construction of the Fellowship Hall as a first unit for the church school and sanctuary until additional units were built. And again, our current sanctuary was originally planned to be the Fellowship Hall on the long-term uh, scheme of things. The initial plans, however, were quite different from what uh, was actually built. And we, at the bottom of the picture here, one can see Delaware Avenue. 
uh, and Cherry Avenue here. And the church uh, with the front door would have faced Delaware Avenue here uh, mm -hmm. with a large parking lot in the area which where the, there is grass now and some of the woods. And from the front, it would have looked like an A-frame uh, with the large cross over the front doors. Uh, and this is obviously very different from what uh, was actually built. The land required clearing. So here's apparently members, and we, these were unidentified members, clearing the uh, plot where the church uh, was built in, uh, starting in 1960. Um, and you can see in some of the areas here, there were dips and uh, hollows in the land. It was not uh, it was not level by a long shot. And that's when a great deal of fill was brought in and dumped. And at least one account uh, suggests that the fill was derived from a uh, the, the recent uh, excavation. Uh, to build a high school. In May 1960, uh, the, the church held the first annual country fair. And as we can see, uh, there is no, no, build, no, no church building at that time. Uh, we can see the houses on Custer uh, behind uh, the tent there and behind all the crowd. Uh, and the parking lot was sort of uh, ad hoc. This is a closer view of the fair and the, the tent and the fair. And the fair was held every year for 20 years. Uh, these are some of the uh, handbooks where everybody had the assignment. And basically everybody in the church uh, congregation had a function uh, to carry out for the fair and make it a successful uh, fundraising event for the, each year. This was the plan of what we know as the currently as the sanctuary, which is somewhat different from what we see at, at the present time. Mainly, there is a, uh, a wall down the right side, which sort of is a mirror of the one on the left side. Uh, the, these are classrooms here, yeah, uh, which are now uh, Dana's office and Pastor Karen's office. Uh, that mechanical room. Uh, used to be the kitchen for uh, providing for di church dinners and where the choir uh, is stored and, and the banners are stored uh, were, were restrooms. Uh, mm -hmm. And on the other side, basically the, uh, the closet or the storage room is only about half the size of this classroom. There was a, a wall uh, here or there's a wall here now. Uh, this wall has been removed uh, next door was the pastor's office and the cloakroom and a nursery in a corner of what is now the narthex. Um, this is a picture uh, in the off hours of the construct during the construction of the foundation. And a little later when the uh, framework for the uh, uh, structure of the building uh, had been erected. And when Construction is fairly well along. Uh, this is early in 1961. Uh, the, basically, the windows need to be installed still and some of the uh, siding. And by summer 61, uh, it was a functioning uh, church. Uh, and this shows apparently the congregation leaving uh, at the end of the service. On the sanctuary looked a little different on the inside at the time also. Uh, behind the cross, uh, there's a, a, a glass wall basically. And one can see an additional panel which is not pr there presently. Only, the, only these two panels uh, remain right now. And this, is, uh, this has been opened up. Uh, behind this wall to the right uh, was the pastor's office. And here's uh, Pastor Phelps. Uh, in his office at the time. Uh, the early church uh, was, uh, everybody was quite mindful of uh, costs. And many of the initial documents uh, on the right here 
uh, the um, minutes of two uh, successive annual meetings, uh, a report on the Adult Program Council, uh, looks probably Bob Blake's handwriting, uh, using the Delmore Animal Hospital stationery and the Johnson Johnson stationery here and such as, uh, basically church did have stationery, but it wasn't used very often. Uh, so people donated uh, from their, uh, you know, uh, occupational uh, stationary supplies. Now, in the early 60s, uh, the Women's Association briefly suspended their activities in favor of an adult council, which would be basically co-ed. Uh, Couples Club also went defunct until 1967 when it was restarted again. The annual country fair, as I indicated, was the annual fundraiser. Uh, there were summer vacation church school sessions for the children. Uh, the Deacons Fund was established. There was transiently a men's association. And yeah. during the summer, uh, there were youth retreats to Hebron uh, or, or you could that. actually go there as a summer camp. Mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. news and newsletter, which is a precursor of the Prez, was actually prepared and uh, you know, issued by the minister. And the prayers was established by a group of women in the church to relieve the minister of that particular function. Uh, the session was increased from nine to 12, deacons from five to nine, and the term ruling elders was dropped in favor of just plain elders. Um, the Sunday school registration in the early 60s uh, actually approached 200 people. Uh, and uh, then we have in the early 2000s, uh, the RPMs uh, coming on board at this point in time. Now in 1966, they planned to expand uh, from the original building, uh, plan to expand the church, uh, add education wing and a, 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 a permanent uh, sanctuary. And these were the plans that were drawn up, uh, but not acted on. Uh, the interesting thing is that the, uh, this section right here was essentially maintained and kept for the 1968 expansion, and which is still uh, present today. And we can see that the, what was originally built as a fellowship hall, which is our sanctuary at the present time, the wall is now removed and the, uh, the, these uh, have some of changes here uh, toward what the uh, current configuration is. The actual plans uh, look something like this. And this is what we know the education before the current fellowship hall was built. Uh, and again, we can see uh, the, uh, the narthex in its current configuration. Um, this is the, a cloakroom here. And uh, there are a couple of classrooms down here. The fellowship hall, which would be built in the 1990s, is basically from here uh, uh, out. This is, a, this is the original fellowship hall, which was doubles to serve as classrooms, um, was uh, removed at the time of the, of the current fellowship hall construction. This is what the previous fellowship hall used to look like. And if we look down the hall here uh, to the left, let me get my pointer here. No, there we go. Okay, this is this hall is still uh, present. That's the uh, narthex way down the end of the hall, and this is uh, looking uh, down the hall toward the toward the sanctuary uh, from the Delaware Avenue side. And this was as a sort of four. It could be divided into four classrooms with folding doors. Uh, they could open up here, and then you could open up all four there for the classrooms into a, a fellowship hall where the church functions, dinners, uh, meetings, and that sort of thing uh, were held. Alice Porter, uh, who died in 1978, um, was the first uh, woman elder in uh, Delmar Presbyterian Church in 1967. And she was followed uh, by Mildred Knopf and Eleanor Johnson and Sarah Hazleton in, in subsequent years. Uh, Alice Porter was also a, a quite a, a good amateur photographer. Uh, and some of her uh, pictures that she would take and were found 
uh, in the storage areas of the church when I uh, first assumed the uh, historian function. And uh, she also apparently uh, kept a number of pictures chronicling uh, the events of the church uh, during her time there. Now in 1966, again, uh, when the, the actual construction uh, did not, was not completed until 1968, uh, but this is the configuration the church would have had at the end of the 1960s. And this drawing is actually by uh, Frank Sheridan, who was Marion Sheridan's uh, husband. And I'll say more about Frank, uh, Frank's artwork as we go through the uh, presentation here. Um, about the time that the uh, education wing was completed, uh, the bell tower and carillon uh, was completed in 1968. Um, interesting, uh, 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 a former member of the church, uh, Barbara, um, uh, blocking here, uh, who now lives in Florida, uh, has apparently struck up a friendship with the month's great granddaughter. How much? Talmadge, Barbara Talmadge, yeah. That's what I thought. Thanks. Um, now, actually, it really was going to be a bell tower. Mm -hmm. And these are a couple of Frank Sheridan drawings, uh, which show uh, the configuration as a bell tower uh, with the uh, rope to ring the bell. And there's an accompanying uh, letter uh, with a quote for, for a 400 pound bell uh, of $1,200 and somebody has written on the bottom of it, seems like a lot for a bell. And so therefore it became a Carillon Tower instead. And this is probably fortunate because one can only guess at how many high school students on the way home from high school would be able to resist ringing the bell from this uh, hanging rope on down the side of the tower. Uh, this is a picture of Frank Sheridan and another picture here. Uh, and as I said, a lot of the illustrations you're going to see today are Frank's uh, drawings. You know, in 1970, uh, we had several uh, events, including a 1973 break into Pastor Phelps' study. Uh, there was a registry of memorial gifts book, uh, and I would comment here that some of the uh, gifts were in terms of a memorial tree. And to my knowledge, I'm not sure that any memorial tree is currently extant or anywhere around the church. So probably a memorial tree is not a great idea. In 1976, in con concert with the uh, National uh, Bicentennial, uh, the church did have a bicentennial service. Uh, in 1977, uh, they, they first looked at increasing the size of the Christian Education Wing, which was delayed until 1994 and became basically our fellowship hall. And 1978 is when the lamp of the Christian year uh, was um, donated by uh, Frank Mangle and June Lee and Peter Dorwalt uh, did, I think the carpentry and the elect electrification of that. And I suspect uh, this is familiar to all current church members, the panels. Now, Pastor Phelps retired uh, the end of April 1980, after which a pastoral nominating committee was formed. And also concomitant with that time, the pastor's office and the church secretary office was relocated to where it currently is with for Dana and Pastor Karen. In 1980, after 20 years, the fair was canceled uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, 1981, uh, uh, Reverend Larry Dice uh, preached his candidacy sermon and assumed uh, the second uh, pastorate of the uh, Delmar Presbyterian Church. This is uh, from April 1980 and uh, George Phelps retirement dinner. And George used to illustrate some of his ser sermons uh, with quotes from uh, Charlie Brown. And so he was presented uh, an original uh, George, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, original Schultz uh, cartoon from uh, the Charlie Brown comic, uh, comic strip. The alterations which occurred where we relocated the offices shown here. 
and also uh, in the fellowship hall, the, the kitchen, and there was a, uh, a, a women's lounge established uh, there, which sort of was predecessor of the library in the uh, current uh, configuration. Uh, Reverend Larry Dice uh, shown with uh, Chris and Paul here and an earlier picture of Larry. 1981, there was another break into the church uh, and, and a subsequent fire, uh, which destroyed uh, apparently the church scrapbook with clippings and fo photos of the church's first 25 years, mm -hmm. largely created by Alice Porter. So I have no idea, I've never seen that. And I really have no idea what we lost in that uh, particular fire. 1981, it was a combination of Thanksgiving and the 25th anniversary of the church was celebrated. And uh, the first church banners appeared and the first of uh, several re-roofings uh, was uh, undertaken. In 1984, there was a garage, giant garage sale sort of in replacement of the uh, annual fair. Um, in 1986, pews replaced the chairs and the Custer scar was excised and I'll describe that a little bit later. I had never heard, heard that term before, but it does appear in a number of ch church documents. Uh, in 1987, uh, Reverend Rhodes uh, celebrated his 100th birthday. Uh, 1987 also, there was an initial discussion of putting senior housing on the property to the area to the northeast of the current church. Uh, but this was sort of uh, came to a dead end uh, when um, wetlands issues were raised. Uh, so nothing mm -hmm. has ever been done there. So we, we don't live there anymore. We live in Beverwick instead. Uh, so uh, building expansion was again reviewed uh, for the fellowship hall. And the senior highs uh, in uh, the end of the 80s uh, began meeting with the Reformed Church senior highs as a prelude to the RPMs. Uh, some of you might remember the blue chairs that were there before the pews. I do. Uh, and that was done in 1986. Mm -hmm. This is the so-called, let me get the issue of the Custer scar. And this is the only photograph that I've found so far that shows anything there. This is the back parking lot over toward uh, Cherry Avenue in the background there. And this is Jim Norix. This is probably taken sometime in the, in the early 70s. Um, Anyway, that you can see that there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, foliage and tree, number of trees over in this area, which is uh, grass now. And apparently this was cut down. Uh, the trees were pretty much cut down, but the stumps were left for some time. And that was referred to in some of the church documents as the Custer scar. And so the, the stumps were removed and grass was planted there in 1986. And uh, the Custer scar was, that's the last, we see that in any of the church documents. Uh, picture of Reverend Road uh, at the, about the time of his 100th birthday. And in the 90s, uh, we had Ethel Pratt celebrate her 100th birthday. And then the, also the 35th church uh, anniversary of the church. And in 1991, the initial handbells were purchased and the handbell choir begun. Uh, 1992, there was the first mission possible, sort of a, a large garage sale or a lawn sale. Um, in 1993, that was a, the bicentennial of the town of Bethlehem. And Floyd Brewer, a member of our church, was the lead editor uh, for that publication. And if you've not seen that, that's it's just a tremendous history of detailed history of the town of Bethlehem. There's an incredible amount of detail that was collected to put together in that. And I suspect there must be a copy in the library, uh, at least the town library for sure. In 1993, the Couples Club, uh, after a run of about 25 years, uh, disbanded in favor of uh, uh, irregular uh, social events. Ethel Pratt, uh, 100th birthday, and I would note that we have uh, you know, Sigrid Brayton is a uh, you know closing in on her hundredth year. Congratulations! And an early picture of the handbell choir with uh, Tom Hyde as the director, uh, and in more formal regalia here, 
Uh, we have the Barkers, uh, the Hydes, uh, the Tweedies, and Pam is here of, of our current membership. This is the uh, Bethlehem uh, Bicentennial, uh, which again, Floyd Brewer, a member of the church, uh, was uh, the senior editor. And it's a, again, it's a, I, it's, it's a wonderful read uh, for detail of the uh, history of Bethlehem. This is the last uh, meeting at the Lynx uh, uh, Crystal Lake uh, retreat uh, of the Couples Club, uh, the last picture of the Couples Club before it disbanded. In the 1990s, uh, we did uh, finally uh, finalize the plans and the uh, uh, plans to proceed with the um, uh, the new education and uh, addition addition to the education wing and the fellowship hall. Uh, the church held a, a, again a large lawn sale in September 1996. And at the end of the 90s, uh, the organ was rebuilt. And we do have some pictures of before and after on that one. This is another Frank Sheridan drawing uh, to present sort of uh, a, a picture of what the, what the uh, planned uh, addition would, would look like when it's completed. And again, uh, this is uh, the, the, the rough plans for the, we're gonna have the kitchen and the library, uh, a couple more classrooms and then the fellowship hall. Uh, the groundbreaking was in July, 1994, at which uh, Pastor Dice, uh, Bob Barker was present and uh, Jenny Phelps and one of the Phelps uh, sons uh, came, came for the ceremony. And this is some of the uh, pictures taken during the construction of the Fellowship Hall, 1994 into early 1995. And its dedication ceremony uh, was held in the Fellowship Hall in the end of April of 1995. Uh, you might recognize some of the people in the pictures there. Now, in September 1996 was a fairly large lawn sale. And you can see by the amount of goods mm -hmm. and the tents and everything like that, that was, it was quite, a, quite an affair. Mm -hmm. And I'd call your attention to the piles and piles and racks of clothing, uh, only a small portion of which actually sold and the rest was then taken down and uh, donated for, uh, uh, to, uh, for recycling. And in the, in the, recycling process or in the, in the, in the, in the cleanup process, uh, some 20 odd, some hundred dollar bills were found in one of the pockets of one of the dresses. And oh. the, it, it was held by the, uh, the police department, I think in town for about a year. And the original owner of the dress was never found, never identified. So this went to, uh, uh, uh to, uh, uh, uh Went to mission. Mission, yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, we also celebrated Larry Dice ordination in 1997, 25th anniversary. And in the early 2000s, uh, there was a mortgage burning for the 1994 expansion. And the organ was refurbished. Um, we had another mission possible, but did not, not find, we didn't find any more $100 bills at that particular one. Um, 2006, uh, dedication of the new uh, Two Great Commandments sign over the entrance to the sanctuary for Easter. And in November, we celebrated the 50th anniversary dinner at Normanside with a fairly large uh, dinner and party. Um, and at the end of the 2000, uh, first decade, uh, the capital campaign for the and the roof was replaced again. Uh, well, here's Larry Dice uh, part participating in the mortgage burning. Uh, the organ uh, for many many years uh, sort of looked like this, and this the the upgrades uh, in, in the turn of the, the turn of the century there 
Um, that's what it looks like at its present state. Is 2002 mission uh, possible? Again, uh, fairly extensive in terms of uh, items for, for sale or resale. And the 50th anniversary began with uh, in April with a 1950s themed sock hop. And here's our, some of our members in their 50s uh, regalia. The two great commandment sign, which is row over the door to the sanctuary. And the 50th anniversary in November at Norman's side. And I suspect uh, we can identify a number of people here in the pictures. Hmm. Some more of the membership here. Hmm. And some more. Uh, in the second decade, uh, Pastor Dice retired. Uh, we had uh, Bob, Reverend Bob Fultz Morrison as an interim minister, and uh, Karen, uh, Pastor Karen as our uh, current minister. Um, also in 2014, it was the first ecumenical service in the park, uh, the, picnic in the par picnic and praise in the park uh, was held at El Elm Avenue Park. And the first Stop Hunger Now uh, dehydrated meal packaging of which we've had the most recent edition uh, just a few weeks ago. And 2015, uh, we welcomed our first fa uh, family promise guests. Um, here's some pictures from uh, Pastor Dice's retirement party. Uh, Pastor uh, Robert Fultz Morrison. And Pastor Karen. <laughs> the, the second decade here, some additional events in 2015, the playground uh, was replaced. Uh, the Woods project was completed in 2018. And of course, in 2020, uh, COVID uh, came and uh, rather radically changed our, our daily practices and our weekly practices. Uh, the Earth Care Task Force, and a church designation as an earth as an earth care congregation, uh, and restructuring eliminated the former committees. Uh, picture the the uh, the new new playground as compared to the old playground, which I believe was built in the seventies, but we don't have a specific date for that. And the woods project, which helped clear out the woods. And uh, uh, the, the, some of the events of the last couple of years here, uh, the earth care uh, emphasis on reduction in single use plastics, uh, the ventilation project for the sanctuary, uh, the community day this year, and then of course our temporary storage of the Bethlehem uh, Central uh, excess desks and chairs bound for Liberia. Uh, and here's the installation of some of the uh, heating and cooling vents in the uh, offices. Uh, the Spring Community Day this past year in uh, May. And uh, some of the events here, including the uh, bouncy house, uh, some of the uh, information booths, and of course, the barbecue, you know. And this was the storage on the lawn for several weeks of the uh, BC desks uh, bound for Liberia. Uh, I'd like to just kind of run through some additional pictures here, sort of jog a few memories here as we go. Uh, this is one from the earlier events of the Prez, actually issue number four in November 73. And when uh, Dick and Via Root and uh, Jim Norx were uh, active in the, in the church school. And apparently what they did is they did a number of uh, reenactments with the, with the kids. And it must have been a stitch to really be in, the, in, those, in, in those classes because I suspect uh, they were really enjoyable. Uh, one, did, one time they did uh, 
you know, the, uh, the, the fall of Jericho. And then the next month they did the, uh, the uh, uh, war with the Midianites there. So uh, during the 60s and 70s into the 80s, actually, a um, number of retreats uh, from the youth groups up to yep. Hebrew, which was owned by the Presbytery at the time, I believe it was sold in the mid 2000 teens uh, when the Presbytery sold off, so it's no longer an option. But from the 60s right through the uh, 80s and early to 90s, um, there were a number of uh, retreats held with the different uh, youth groups. Uh, at if you could you could you go up there, there were uh, buildings that you could uh, stay in. Um, and prepare meals and with, had fireplaces in them for, for the winter. Uh, and the spring they had uh, everything else either up on a hill here. This, the bottom right uh, picture is what they call Strawberry Hill. And it was sort of a circle with the cross and you could have a, a, a brief service up there. Uh, and in 1984, the junior highs buried a time capsule. Um, so when I heard that the uh, Presbyterians are going to sell off Hebron. I went back there in 2010 to try to retrieve the capsule, but that was beyond uh, the ability to locate where it was. So I mean, I didn't find it. No. Um, we have Junior High picnic here. Uh, winter retreat at Hebron uh, was uh, kind of a blast in the snow, literally. Uh, Alpine slide trips in the 90s. Uh, the, uh, you know, I think uh, Lee Hesburgh took the uh, middle schoolers to uh, the Deerfield River rafting, and uh, uh, Brayton's may have been involved in some of that too. I think in 2003, uh, the church uh, the school did the can construction or can construction uh, for a couple of years running. Uh, where the food was uh, donated. Uh, 2008, we had uh, enough kids to have quite a fairly extensive uh, church pageant for Christmas. And, uh, and the Nisbees were did some apple picking there uh, during one of the following year. And this was originally in the news, and this was prepared by uh, the pastor uh, without much help otherwise. And so the group of women took it over and uh, it had issue uh, number one of the prez in 1973, 1972, 73, sorry. Um, and it's been published essentially monthly or close to monthly ever since. Uh, we're missing a number of, of um, issues uh, obviously, the format changed uh, considerably over the time before it evolved into its present format. Um, and then uh, we have some pictures of the Women's Association here, and this goes back now to 1967. So this goes way back uh, uh, here. And uh, another picture. And Quilting was uh, always a big uh, event for the Women's Association. They usually raffled one off in the end of the year uh, friendship tea, which they ran uh, for the community at large. Uh, and um, this is a 76's edition of the quilt. Um, the other Women's Association also did a recipe book, which they published. In, uh, uh, you know, distributed. Uh, everybody contributed their favorite recipes. Uh, there was the Friendship Tea, which was held every year for many years. Uh, and this is in the old Fellowship Hall before the new Fellowship Hall was built. Yes, sorry, I yeah. uh, another uh, preparation here before that, a Women's Association meeting here. Is Barbara Talmadge here, among others, you know. Uh, and in 1990, they had a quilt ex 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 exhibit as well as uh, 
raffling off uh, one of the one of the one of the quilts here. These were hung uh, in all over the church. Uh, the couples club, which basically was active between 1967 and its last meeting in 1993, uh, had a generally, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, prescribed format. And every September meeting was always at the Lynx Crystal Lake uh, camp. Um, usually were monthly meetings. Uh, frequently, uh, there'd be a, the group would go uh, to a, a play, a concert, or some sporting event. In one year, there was a curling lesson at the uh, curling rink over uh, uh, in uh, uh, Western Albany, West Albany here. And December meeting was, was, was a Christmas party, which was uh, opened up to the entire church membership. April, May was usually what they call a progressive dinner. And then June was usually dinner out at a restaurant. Uh, okay. Uh, these are more Frank Sheridan drawings here. And uh, Frank really captured the, the flavor of the, uh, the, the meeting, the September meeting at the uh, uh, Lynx uh, camp. Uh, was, horseshoes was always uh, an event. Um, the, inside the uh, camp, if it was cool, the, we could go in there and kind of by, stay by the fire. Um, some of the meetings were somewhat raucous, I would say. Uh, uh, at least I, I don't remember this particular one. Uh, it's probably before our time a little bit anyway. Uh, but with uh, Frank's comments here, uh, something about uh, sadistic committee or something like that. So uh, this we do have picked some pictures from the Halloween uh, party in 1981. Uh, you might recommend recognize some people like Pam and Charlie Scholes and Bob Link here. Uh, the Scholes over here in their costumes. Uh, 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 Jack Whipple uh, and uh, Bob Link there. 1984, uh, we uh, built a sort of a, a, a drawbridge to the castle, uh, and it was a medieval frolic. And we have uh, uh, Sir Ron and Lady Carolyn Tweedy on the left here, uh, Sir Kurt Matterson and uh, Lady Nancy Link in the middle here, and uh, the Taps over here on the right. Uh, I guess we didn't rate nobility, so um, at the uh, Lynx camp, uh, again, the horse, horseshoes was a staple. Uh, canoe races as well, um, volleyball, and uh, just conversation, and then occasionally jarts uh, were, were, were usual events. Uh, the progressive dinner, and uh, this is again another Frank Sheridan drawing. Uh, you, you would go to one couple's house for the appetizer with maybe uh, three other couples, then move to a different house uh, for a salad course, uh, move on to another house with a, another a, a different group of uh, people for dinner, and everybody would meet at the church uh, for dessert at the church at about 10 o'clock that night. Um, again, we're missing a number of uh, issues of the prez and some of the annual reports. And I suspect these were on uh, computer tapes, uh, which we still have the tapes, but we do not have the hardware or the software to read the tapes. And I suspect uh, some of those or some of the information is on uh, those tapes. And until we can get a, a way of uh, fairly inexpensively, um, you know, uh, harvesting the information from the tapes, uh, we're, we're missing these, these issues. So if you have any old, old issues in the, in the 90s here or even before that uh, uh, from, of the prez or the annual reports uh, around the house, uh, appreciate any donation there. 